Okay, here we go. So we're entering the image. As we can see, we're invoking the QA chain guide. There we go. It gets it back. And now we're invoking orders DB with customer. Well, bam. Okay, we've got it back. Wow. Look at that, dear Mike. So we're using HTML formatting here, and it's picked out. Look at this. So it's picked out the the key thing, and it's put it in red. That's amazing. So today I'm going to show you how to automate up to about ninety percent of all customer emails to get outputs such as this. It's able to handle multiple queries in one email, connect to the company's knowledge base to give answers on all the products, and also look up the order database to give updated information about the shipping and so on. Let's dive in. So how is this gonna work? So firstly, when we get an email into the inbox, this is gonna automatically trigger our fast API endpoint, which is going to host our agent. So this will kick off our agent, our Langchain agent, which will have access to two tools, but you can expand on this as you want. We're gonna have a company doc, so we're gonna have a vector database of all the stuff on our website or all the company documents, manuals, how to install certain products in a vector database. And then we're also gonna to connect to the order database so the agent can look up a customer's order based on their email and tell them whether it's been shipped, tracked, what's the delivery date, and so on. This is then gonna be pipelined into a checking and formatting agent to make sure that we're actually answering the email correctly. And if not, we can pass it off to a human to answer. And if it is a correct answer, format the email nicely using some HTML and then automatically send that email off. This pipeline takes maybe 40 seconds so you can answer customer emails incredibly quickly. So let's jump right into the code. So first, let's do some imports. So we just need to import Langchain, OS, .env, fast API, Pydantic, etc. Now, for the vector database, we're going to use Pinecone. So to connect to Pinecone, you need to get your Pinecone API key and your Pinecone environment. If you want to know more about how to actually upsert documents, I'm not going to show you in, in this video. You can go watch this video up here, which I go over exactly how to create a vector database and connect to it. So next, we initialize the Pinecone client with the API keys. We get OpenAI embeddings, and then we actually create the vector store. So we load from an existing index, so we're not upserting. We've already got the index up there. We're loading from it. So this is the name of the index. We're passing in embeddings, text key, and I'm getting the space. So for this, I'm just going to be testing on a solar panel sales company that I've made up. And then we turn this into a retriever. So this is an important step. You need to turn the vector store into a retriever so that we can actually retrieve information. And then next we get the large language model. So we're just going to use GPT 3.5. And then we're going to turn this into a QA chain. So we get the retrieval QA from chain type. We pass in the retriever here. So we pass in the retriever and the large language model so we can get a chain that we can call run on. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to create an agent, right? So an agent, you need to pass in a bunch of tools. So it's, it's a little bit difficult to pass in just a QA chain as a tool. So we actually need to put a wrapper function around it. So this is what it's going to look like. We're going to put in a question and then we're going to do QA chain dot run and pass it in as the actual query. You, you'll understand why once we instantiate the agent. So this is our vector database tool, pretty simple stuff. Now we want to be able to actually retrieve from a database. So the way I'm gonna do this, I'm just gonna do like, a, I'm gonna just mimic a database. I'm not actually gonna to connect to a database because there's so many different databases and ways you can connect to the back end of a Shopify store, whatever, etc. This will just show you the sort of the blueprint that you do. So we're gonna look it up on the email. So we pass in an email and here I'm just gonna create a data frame where we're going to do like a, just a simple match statement and return the matching rows. But what you would wanna do if you're actually gonna to connect to a database is change, change this code here, do the connection, pass in the query, hit the API and get stuff back. So we're just gonna create so, sort of like an example database here with three different rows. 
and then we're going to turn the string back of these matching rows. Now we've created those functions, we need to actually turn them into tools that we can attach to an agent. So here we create the two tools. Basically, when you create a tool, a tool dot from function, you have to give it a name and then the description. The description is super important because this tells the agent exactly what what this tool is used for and sort of when it should use it, right? So for the orders tool, useful for when you need to, to look up someone's orders with their email. And then the QA tool, all the documents and general info about the business, useful for answering general questions. Again, you don't want to make these super long. They just need to be really concise and give a great description of what the actual tool does. Next, we just pass it into a list and then we're going to add the system message. So this is actually what tells the agent what sort of agent it is and what it needs to do. So this is a fairly big prompt to get really good value out of your agents. You sort of need a, a fairly big prompt that explains exactly what the agent needs to do. So here you're an exceptional customer service agent responsible for handling and responding to customer emails with a focus on providing accurate and timely information. I'll have all this on my GitHub as well. So feel free to take and use this prompt. And then we give it step by step exactly what we want the we want it to do. So we need, we're making sure to include any relevant document. If the customer's issue requires escalation to another department, pass it on, inform the customer of the steps that, that have been taken, obtain all the necessary information and so forth. And then we pass that into agent quags as the system message. Now let's instantiate the agent. So we're gonna create memory, we're just gonna do a conversational summary buffer memory. We're gonna set that to 2000 tokens. This just allows it, the agent to know what's going on in, in its past cycles. We're gonna do chat GPT here. We're not doing 3.5 normal, we're doing turbo 16K 0613. This is the function calling model of GPT 3.5. You've got to use this, otherwise it won't know how to call functions. And then we instantiate the agent. We pass it the tools, the language model, and here as well, the agent type, we're using OpenAI functions agent. Passing in the system prompt and the memory. And there we go, there's the agent. And if we pass it in a query, it will go away, run and get an answer on that. So let's let's run this. Let's make a query. How to install a solar panel and when will my order arrive? Let's hope this works. Okay, here we go. So we're entering the image. As we can see, we're invoking the QA chain where it's just asking for the solar panel installation guide. There we go, it gets it back. And now we're invoking orders DB with customer email example. I actually didn't input the customer email. So it's coming back and it's saying this is empty. And it's trying it again, but it's not, not really finding anything because I, I didn't give it a customer email. And then it creates the email response here. And it gives all the stuff back. So how do we actually turn this into an API that we can use automatically in our workflow? So let's delete this. And we are going to use fast API. I. So we're going to use, we're going to instantiate fast API, app equals fast API. We're going to use Pydantic to set up the query. It's just easier to deserialize JSONs this way. And then we're going to create our post endpoint where we're going to take the query. We're going to call the agent, pass out the, con pass out the content, and then return this content. So this will work. So next we're going to just deploy this on render. I've shown you in a bunch of videos how to deploy this on render, but it's again, fairly easy. You come here, hit web service, you choose your GitHub repository and you hit deploy. Make sure that in your environment, you have your different keys. So Python version as well, 3.11.2, use this one, it works. Put your Python environment, API key and OpenAI keys in here. And also when you start up, so the build command will be install requirements.txt. So this is what the requirements looks like. You can use a Python package called pip, piprex to actually build these pretty quickly. And then on the start command, we're just gonna use uvicorn. So uvicorn colon app host on 000 port 10,000. And deploy that and then this should work fine. And then your URL is going to be here. So how do we actually now automate all of this? So let's go over to make.com. Okay, so let's create a new scenario in make.com. So Gmail, we're going to use Gmail. We are going to watch email, connect it to your email, 
if you don't have a custom domain, if it's just a .gmail, there's a few more steps you have to go through, but there is, there's a pretty good guide on it. Choose folder, all mail, simple criteria, all unread emails, we're gonna return one. So that's gonna be okay. Next, we want to serialize our JSON. So we're going to create a JSON. We're gonna have a query. So make sure you create a header with a query. And then we're going to do sub sub subject, new lo email content. I'm gonna do text content name, send a name. And then we're gonna do the sender email address as well. So we formatted the JSON. Now we're gonna do the HTTP request. Hit HTTP, make, make a request. We're going to do a post request. The body type is gonna be raw. We're gonna set this to our JSON and then attach the JSON in here. Now get your URL, put your URL in there and that should be everything you need to do here. Now we're actually gonna do a chat GPT step to actually check the email and make sure it's all formatted correctly because sometimes it doesn't come back correctly. Sometimes it adds like two emails or it gets a little bit confused, right? So we need to do a reformatting and just make sure that we've actually answered the question. So we're gonna do create a completion, make sure you have an OpenAI connection, put in your, put in your API key. I'm just gonna use GPT-4 here and let's add the message. So we're gonna do a user message going to take okay so we're telling it to you know the sort of the context telling it to output html with no backslash ends because sometimes the parsing doesn't really work and then it will output a backslash n as text and it's just it's just horrible so we need to end html to give it spacing and everything's nice this also means it will add styling to it as well you can give certain specifications on the styling that that, that you want and then we are going to do output is the data so hit okay and then we're gonna do another Gmail. We're gonna send an email. So this, to do a reply, you need to hit R colon and then subject. And then the content is just gonna be choices, message, content. Here we go. So that will take the first reply from that. Oh, that, yeah, we need to add the recipient as well. So that's gonna be just a sender email address. So hit okay. So there we go. So let's test this now. So I'm going to come here. I'm going to mike at brightai.agency. How to install a solar panel. Okay, so we're going to ask for like how to install a solar panel. And then I've got the order on the way. When it will it arrive? So let's send that off. So that should go into my inbox. Now let's run this. Okay. That's come in. So we're hitting our HTTP. We're doing our HTTP request. So this is gonna what's this is what's gonna take a little bit of time here. Okay, there we go. So that's responded back. And then we're passing into GPT-4. This might take a little while. We're doing it with GPT-4. But let's have a look at the response. Status go 200. That's always nice. Okay, here we go. So this is the big response. Let's see what GPT-4 outputs. There we go. That's done. Let's have a look at the email. Bam. Okay, we've got it back. Wow. Look at that, dear Mike. So we're using HTML formatting here and it's picked out, look at this. So it's picked out the, the key thing and it's put it in red. That's amazing. And it's like regarding your order. I found your order. Flower T her ship quantity is one to track your order. And look at this. This is amazing. This is better than any sort of just customer agent you would get anyway. And this is all being done with AI. That's amazing. And then we've even got a, a link to the documentation as well. If you have that set up. So this is amazing. So you can easily automate probably 90% of all customer emails this way and build on top of the code that um, that's going to be on my GitHub. And especially for e big e-commerce sites that are paying thousands, thousands of dollars for virtual assistants to go around and, and do all this processing in the background, this, you know, you can sell a product like this very easily. Okay, thank you for watching. If you like this video and you're a company that wants to work with me, I've got an email in the description. Send me an email and we'll get in touch.